Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from All Off Road. I hope you guys are well. I'm sitting here at Windora. I just came out of the desert. I attended a friend's trip, which was supposed to be a 10 day desert trip. But it ended after five days. I don't really understand why. There was a lot of rushing. Um, but anyway, so I'm now around Windora here and um, I noticed there is the Welford National Park. And on the way here, one of my subscribers told me about another small little national park called Hellhole Gorge. And that I, national parks I would not drive out here for, but given I'm here, I have time, I'm gonna check them out. So come along for the ride. Good cuppa in the morning. I have purchased these um, a while ago. I saw that somewhere advertised. It's a uh, total odor protection for seven days. And I took that on this trip and it works very well. That is my first application in seven days now. And yeah, now it starts getting a bit smelly. So very interesting shit and apparently yeah, it has no none of the nasties in, so you just take a little bit. I know not the best here. Put that under your armpit, like that. And then even if you shower or so, you don't have to reapply. You just, um, when it starts getting smelly again, and that can be four days, it can be seven days, you apply a little bit more. And in the desert and so on, where you only have quick showers and it's hot, um, yeah, it works brilliant and I, I really like it. That stays in the car. So that uh, test-wise has worked very well. Prices really do hurt. Yeah, access to the Welford National Park from Windora is pretty easy. It's reasonably main roads. However, a lot of them is gravel here. At the present time, the roads are in, in very good conditions here. Uh, I haven't even aired down yet. I'm still on 40 PSI and yeah, no issue whatsoever. However, you should keep your weather in mind. The whole area is flood prone and you certainly don't want to get in here if there is any chance of uh, good rain coming because that may keep you trapped here. So definitely something to keep in mind. The Welford National Park really has two sections, the eastern and the western side. I decide to do the western side first and have a look what I find there. There are two circuits on the western side. One is a camping circuit and one is a desert circuit. At the moment I'm doing the camping uh, circuit which goes along the Barco River. In this video I'm trying something new. I've brought in my mate James to handle some of the voiceovers. James has a voice that's just perfect for narration, so I'm excited to introduce him to you all. Let's see what he brings to the table. Hey Stefan, thanks for the introduction. I love your videos, and I'm more than happy to help out with some of the narration. Please let me know in the comments section how I'm doing, and if you would like to hear more about me. So I had a look at the jetty here on the River Drive, which really is just a little rock formation going into the river. If I wouldn't have had a swim, I may have gone for a swim here. Mind you, usual brown water, reasonably fresh. A few little speed bumps coming in here, but yeah, I'll continue now the river drive and uh, see what it brings. Next is uh, the retreat shearing sheds, I think. And there's supposedly also a camp spot. Who knows, maybe I, if it looks nice, I may even stay there because I think the other leg um, or the other drive here is really a drive to be done in the afternoon because you're driving through sand dunes and uh, with the sun on it now at full glare and during the day it's probably not that photogenic. So I may just rest there a bit and then in the afternoon continue that drive and maybe find a camp there somewhere. Uh, 
Now guys, just did a little check of the car and noticed that my steering box is weeping. So I was planning to spend a bit more time here in two national parks, but uh, still two and a half thousand k's from home. So I think tomorrow I'm gonna make my way home and yeah, get that sorted, unfortunately, which is a bit of a pity, but uh, yeah, so it is. So I'm gonna stay here at the little boomerang waterhole at the Welford National Park and enjoy the evening, I have dinner and early morning I'm up towards home. Although I cleared out quite a bit of loose grass after my desert journey, I didn't inspect closely enough. To my surprise, there was a considerable build-up of Mitchell grass tucked away between my radiator and AC condenser. Oh, With a bit of spare time on my hands, I figured it was the perfect moment to roll out my Alton hammock for a well-deserved nana nap. The combination of my EcoFlow Delta II and Amazon induction cooker has once again proven its worth on this trip. The windy conditions we've encountered made induction cooking the far more convenient and effective choice. Today, with the strong winds continuing, it was clear that induction was the way to go. Gonna keep an eye on the uh, power steering fluid. At the moment, looks all right, and I should have some in the cruiser here. So I top that up a bit later. Now I'm gonna do the desert drive, which is supposedly a desert circuit drive. So we'll see. So the desert drive is for wheel drive only, supposedly. But I guess we soon will find out if that is correct. Yeah, there are a few washouts on the drive, so that is something to consider. It's a one-way drive actually, you, so you won't have any, or you shouldn't have any oncoming traffic. Um, but yeah, that's why it is for wheel drive only. And nothing crazy here, but there are a few washout and ditches, so you want to have a little bit of clearance. And I think that's why it's probably for wheel drive only. Um, otherwise, it's yeah, just a fairly hard-packed sandy track so far. But uh, I guess it's red dirt, so if you haven't been in the Simpson Desert, this may be a good little, you know, taste of it. And of the red dirt, our red sand. The entire desert loop spans a mere 23 kilometers, but it's dotted with several noteworthy spots. Kicking off the journey, is the Adderford Waterhole, also known as the Desert Waterhole by National Parks. Well, it's water in there, but you can see here, it's reasonably dry. Usually the water would be up here. This spot offers a unique glimpse into the arid yet vibrant desert ecosystem.
scattered along the desert loop are a few more relics of oil drilling, as well as old pastoral stock troughs. Unfortunately, there's not much historical information available about these pieces of the past, which adds an element of mystery to their presence in the landscape. A notable spot along the desert loop is this solitary red sand dune. If you're fresh from exploring the desert, it might not seem extraordinary, but for those who haven't witnessed desert dunes, it's quite a sight. This lone dune, standing out in the middle of flat terrain, offers a fascinating glimpse into the desert landscape. Having explored the dune, the last major highlight, I turned south onto the Junda to Quilpie Road, setting my course back towards Sydney. The entire desert loop, including some time for sightseeing, shouldn't take more than 2 to 2.5 hours to complete. Heading back home, I faced a bit of a challenge with my steering box still leaking. Fortunately, I had a liter of transmission fluid on hand for top-ups. Hi guys, I'm here at my favorite stopover uh, if I go to the desert, Elroy Campground in Queensland. Um, yeah, beautiful spot, not far from the main road. Beautiful billabong in the back, firewood provided. And uh, the hosts, uh, Mary and Mac, really have become friends um, over the past uh, few years. Super lovely people. And yeah, they have uh, hot Artesian bars over there, which are probably going to jump in uh, tomorrow morning. So it's just a beautiful place. And whenever I can, I stop over here on the way to the desert. I made a dedicated video of uh, El Roy. Check it out. And yeah, if you're ever in the area, I can only highly recommend it. Uh, I keep coming back. My timing couldn't have been better. They were hosting a camp kitchen dinner with friends and graciously invited me to join. And let me tell you, there's nothing quite like their free range lamb, straight from their own stock. So I replaced my old rear lights, which came with a Rasla bar with uh, two of the laser utility lights because to be honest they, they were never that great in the first place and they got a bit yellow and so on so let's have a look pretty damn good so for camp setup I have one angled here one angled here I think the cables are a bit thin for the two of them. I need a bit bigger cables. They lose a bit power if I run bows at the same time, but actually, yeah. So yeah, very happy with them. Let me tell you a little about Alroy Station. It's nestled in the remote reaches of outback Queensland and is a vibrant working sheep and cattle station with a few camels also present. It's a paradise for those who love wildlife and bird watching, bushwalking, fishing for yabbies, and capturing the beauty of nature through photography. The station offers an escape into tranquility with its vast open spaces and spectacular night skies, perfect for stargazing. The station's facilities are top notch with immaculately maintained amenities. The highlight, their giant outdoor tubs that offer a magical experience under the starlit sky. The camping areas are spacious and level, ensuring a comfortable stay. Expect a warm touch with daily firewood delivery and friendly chats in the afternoon. For those interested in a unique dining experience, 
They offer camp oven packs and dinner packages. Just make sure to book in advance. The property also takes care of waste removal and offers clean facilities. It's conveniently located just 60 kilometers off the Adventure Highway past Yulo, making it an accessible retreat for adventurers and nature lovers. Just have a look. This Kiji wood, um, which you get here provided by Roy, it just burns so hot. Look, I hardly had any wood on the fire last night. Had a good 12 hours and look at that coal and everything left here. Uh, that is, yeah, such a great wood for burning. It is hard as nails. Today I'm going to have a shower now and uh, have a look at their new cottage which is ready. So otherwise you only uh, get camping here but now they have a cottage. So I film a little bit there and then I head off uh, back home. Steering box still leaking and um, yeah looking forward to get home again as well even though the trip was much much shorter than I hoped for. It was fairly fresh at night um, again without that naked blanket uh, just in my summer sleeping bag obviously I have the thick minus uh, 12 sleeping bag with me but I only had the summer sleeping bag and the naked blanket and that just worked um, so this blanket I do really like, I have to say. As I said before, it's going to stay in the car, that's for sure. So, that's a new Elroy cottage, which you can rent if you don't want to camp, but want comfort. Aircon. No. Oven for the winter. Beautiful kitchen. Oh, if you like cooking, you like that stove and the oven. Look at that. You can cook up some feasts here. Jeez, that's big. One bedroom. Dining room or another dining room. Obviously that's all windows which you can open up. Another bedroom. Two beds, two singles. Jeez, that is big. Another bedroom. Another double. So I guess you can get easier with Two families, I assume. A little study and guest book. The bath. Oh, a nice big shower. toilet that's good and another living room here well I guess you can be easy here with two families and I guess it's uh, oh, and another study nice So uh, you want to work from here a little bit, you can do that. I better ring home here quick. Well, nearly at home. Tonight I stayed, usually when I stay in Ningen, I stay at the caravan park, at the Riverside Caravan Park. It has become quite expensive. I think it was 30 bucks or 35 bucks uh, for six hours sleep um, on an unpowered site so this time I thought I'd give the Ningen where I go to be honest I didn't even know it existed 
I googled caravan park Ningen where popped up and that's a council free camp at the Ningen Weir, a little bit outside of town. Yeah, not too bad. A uh, lot of caravanners, grey nomads there. Uh, the spot is quite nice. It's a loop though and then the middle there's a toilet. So quite good. The only negative is it's very dusty and it's a loop track. I think some of the locals um, make it a pastime to just race once around that loop which stirs up a shitload of dust. Fortunately I parked on an end uh, with the wind in the right direction so I didn't cop any of the dust but a lot of the guys in the vans and so on got absolutely hammered. That happened a few times. Um, otherwise yeah good camp spot council maybe there were all sedans so if you put a bit of a speed bump in there on that round track maybe at the beginning middle and end uh, I think that would stop that behavior fairly quickly um, yeah otherwise now on the home stretch another six and a half hours and yeah another bit shorter than expected but good trip so guys thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed the video Please keep in mind, this is a self-funded channel, so I would greatly appreciate if you could help me out by sharing, liking and subscribing. And if you can, please consider head over to Patreon or buy me a coffee. And with the equivalent of a cup of coffee or two per month, you can really help me making these videos. Thanks a lot for watching and see you along the tracks.